Leo Singles, welcome to the Casa. These are the Gilded Terre Royale today. We're going to meet the soulmate reading. This is for the end of November time frame, guys. Earl Grey tea. Mm. Why? Because it's civilized. That's why. So, pre shovel. That's uh, an eight card read, and we're simply asking who is the right one for you. So it's, I think, an always positive read. It shouldn't be triggery, really. Um, we'll pull uh, two cards for emotions, two cards for the intellect, two for the love and sex nature, and two for the core values and lifestyle. And those four I call the four pillars that you need for a stable uh, relationship. And get a look at your person. So I always say super single, totally single, kind of kidding around. But indicating this as being wide open in a predictive read for someone that's probably not already in your life. Here we're making way for spirit to bring in the person that's right for you, not the next X problem. Okay. Here we have Queen of Swords in their intellectual position. It's going to be over the Nine of Cups. Here I see childhood. Here I see the moon usually for the person. We look at the intellect as well. The Knight of Page of uh, Wands in the Page, looking right at this Queen of Swords and uh, the Hanging Man. We don't do reversals right now. So the Hanging Man is on the unconscious level of the conscious self. Because I read also the conscious here on all four levels and kind of more of the unconscious energy. Um, so of those four, the only major con of the Hanging Man too. Your person here, I think they grew up, um, I don't know if it was a single mom, I think they grew up in a household with a mother who was probably an air sign. That might be helpful because I'll call out astrology too as we go. We're going to get the moon and we're going to get the sun here. But I, I think Aquarius Moon makes sense here for your person. I wouldn't be surprised if the mom might have been Aquarius here. But I think in the household, like the mother was the dominant one. It's probably verbally dominant. And I don't necessarily hear mean in a bad way. I, I just mean that naturally. But I think like the father, like basically had a drinking problem. It's extraordinarily common. I'm not like to try to disparage anyone. But I'm saying that this is the story that they might tell you about their childhood to help identify them. And this is your soulmate. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm saying that we're, we're saying that this is the one that's right for you. This is the one we want, Spirit. The one person. And I don't think that means there's one person. I think there's a quiver. <laughs> it's like load up, God, Spirit, to the next uh, soulmate. Uh, that's the right one for me. So I don't, I don't think it's just that one person in the entire world. There's four to eight billion, depending on your sexual preferences. Uh, bisexuals, with the most logical sexual strategy, have and it, that leaves it pretty wide open. Okay, so um, for the sun here, you got to think Aries sun with this page of wands. And, you know, so, you know, essentially what you have here is like a strong mother, a weak father. And I kind of see them together. Like, I think, like, it's not like they got divorced. Like, it could have went on for a while. I don't think the father was, like, abusive. I think he was emotionally absent, emotionally selfish. He was involved in his own, you know, as someone once told me, I was kind of having to leave an alcoholic. Uh, uh, one time I allowed myself to do that. You know, they said, like, you know, an alcoholic it can't love you because they're busy loving alcohol. And he says, I know that because I was an alcohol, alcohol for 22 years before I got sober. And he said, that was 15 years ago. And so I know. Um, and so no matter how you cut it, no matter what they say, if the father was an alcoholic, uh, if so facto, he was also emotionally unavailable. And then also that leaves then the mother to try to fulfill that, uh, obviously the whole role of like the parent. Uh, for someone who's, um, you know, um, there's a abandonment that's called proximity abandonment. So they could be ill with that a little bit. Um, 
where the person doesn't physically abandon you, but emotionally they're just kind of checked out. There's so many ways that can go. Um, <clears throat> but I think that the mom here would have been stern and uh, strict, just drawn strong boundaries. Um, you know, with this hanged man energy, I just get it that this this is not your kind of Aries that's going to be in your face. You know, there's a lot of pre you know, I'll call it prejudices, stereotypes uh, about the Aries archetype, which I think are mostly true. A squirrel, psh, and they're, you know, gone. Uh, but I think that with the hanged man energy, it's showing that it's Aries is hanging back, you know. I remember a lesson about dispositors involved Paul Newman. And he turned out Saturn was a dispositor for Mars, a bunch of his other planets. And, you know, he was actually, for an Aries, you know, very, actually, people always describe very level-headed and thoughtful. Well, Mars could go crazy and break things, but Saturn wasn't going to let it do anything until it checked with Saturn. And Saturn's the master of, you know, practical and responsible and, you know, um, informed uh, response, <laughs> measured response, you know. Oh, so it's something like that going on with them, you know. They couldn't have their son trying to Saturn, and maybe Saturn's in Capricorn or something well, uh, well aspected somehow. Maybe it's sextile um, to Capricorn um, somehow, um, and um, forms uh, a strong energy with them that keeps them a lot more stable. Just kind of see how this hanging man. But I do see, like, if you're talking with them and stuff, I mean, they're, again, like in Aries, you would think, because they, uh, they may well not have Mercury in Aries. Uh, they're probably going to have Mercury in Pisces. That might help explain a little bit. Um, Mercury in Pisces. So I'd look for an Aquarius moon, uh, Aries sun, Mercury in Pisces here. So, I mean, they're going to be more someone that listens, you know. Um, so you wouldn't maybe necessarily think, well, you think like an area. You're going to listen, right? And talk, talk, talk and that kind of thing. But no. Uh, you'll see them listening. Now let's look at their Mars and Venus energy. Venus more, Queen of Cups here. Now, for an Aries, that's got to be the Pisces uh, Venus, which is exalted there. In the King of Cups in a Pisces Mars, this kind of explains that they may have a stellium with. I uh, won't we'll argue about whether it's three or four planets, but if it's three, that's stellium for me in the same sign. Honestly, if there's three planets are not in the same sign, even if they're not close together. I mean, it, it's just a matter of how it operates, whether it's a stellium or not, um, because you've got the planet of your mind, all the personal planets, the planet of your desire nature in the planet of your will and action and the planet that makes it planet of love and sexuality all in the same sign all lined up this is why they're not to jump on it uh aries <clears throat> the aries that interrupts the aries that talks over people they're not that person you know because they're banging a lot of piscean energies it's not uncommon and not un uncommon see pisces that are uh, assertive as fuck because they got Mars and Aries, which say Mars and Aries, those people don't play. Now, this is in their core value and lifestyle, the sun here. They say the best card in the deck. Let me take a look at what's with it. My God, the Empress. The sun over the Empress. What the heck do they do for a living? You know, with this Pisces energy, it's exalted there in the Venus um, sexually can be kind of passive um, and I especially kind of see that with their Mercury too there's a, a there's a energy that they're gonna uh, hang back I don't want to say necessarily that they're submissive but I think your person they need to spark their fire it's like their Aries is like this tip of the match and everything else is Pisces and something needs to really spark that Aries energy to get them going um, sexually. Um, and there's someone that like emotions are going to be crazy important to them. The emotional quality of the connection they have with you. Um, again, it's not going to be something that you would just think from like, oh, an Aries son. Well, they're not emotional. This person's emotional as fuck.
okay? Um, and you wouldn't expect it, especially with Aquarius Moon. You know, Aquarius Moon, you know, with that sword, boy, she could just cut through things. You know, the moon's all about the mind. This means, you know, um, they're, they can cut through things with their mind. They can see things. They're going to tend to see things very deeply. And this person could be highly intuitive, psychic, anything like that. I got to tell you, <clears throat> that's how this Aquarius Moon could go. Um, <clears throat> It would be uh, uh, audio, some kind of psi audio ability for them. And um, with the sun over the empress, there's so much energy going into their core values and lifestyle. I'll tell you, around the house, they're going to like nice things. They're going to be willing to pay for it. This is someone, somehow, they, they I'm going to tell whatever their stage they are in life, um, somehow they're going to manage to uh, be comfortable in, I mean comfortable with the Empress here. Like man or woman, if you go to this person's house, it's going to be have an, an air to it of sort of, almost I want to say luxury. Um, the abundance, you just kind of feel the abundance, like extra cush, cushions, this kind of thing. Art, just well placed, um, this kind of thing. <clears throat> Unless you're Oprah, <laughs> I it, see this is someone that really brings light uh, to a lot of people. Also, this could simply be a teacher, a son over the Empress. Um, that here, this this would bring out the Empress like the most abundant uh, energy and Venus energy of love and relationship you know wanting to give to other people being able to take care of other people and with the Sun doing it with this abundance you know um, so I could see this as someone that just could literally somehow take care of a lot of people not only take care of themselves but take care of a lot of people Often how the Pisces energy rolls, you know, they, they see a sad story and, you know, that's the Piscean archetype. It just wants to help and somehow they have this ability um, to accumulate wealth, I believe. I, I haven't said this in a while, in a lot of readings, uh, but I think we're dealing with a wealthy person. I don't know if, that, if you want to congratulations uh, for that, uh, Leo's, but I think that's what's going on here. Um, and I gotta think there's an element to their success that's due to they have a very open mind. Um, they don't they don't bring to things a lot of ego, and that's ended up uh, bringing them kind of everything. So with the hanged man, they they would be very open to taking other people's advice. With their way, their Mercury Pisces works probably for them. Um, they have an ability to really tap into their intuition and feel if something's right. Um, and so before they put their energy into it, they would feel that it's all correct. Um, and whatever they put their energy into, it's going to just blossom and grow. I don't particularly see this as a young person. So by now, they probably, I just got to say, probably wealthy. They're probably physically not hurting. You know, they want something, they go buy it, you know. Um, that kind of energy and they've definitely earned it here so let me know what you think of this guys uh, it's meant to be a projective read so it may not be someone in your life this is the end of November time frame but when you do meet them get back to me let me know and leave a message here for me guys and give me a like thumbs up share tell friend tell friend do subscribe thank you